Hello everyone and welcome back to Learning with Jelly. Today we're on lesson 15 and we are going to cover do loops and do loops are very similar to for loops if you have any knowledge or experience in other programming language where you're able to iterate through a series of statements until a certain point. Okay, so let's go in with the syntax. So a do loop is going to start with the keyword do. It's going to end with the keyword end, and don't forget your semicolons. You're going to iterate through a specific variable. You can specify how you want to iterate through that variable. So you can iterate through a list of years, for instance. You can do an incremental iteration, which we're going to talk about momentarily. And then you're going to have some statements in between the do and the end. Okay. So let's jump right into seeing this do loop in action with our first example, where we're going to get out a final bonus rate value. Okay. So I have a data set. And the data set that we're working with that I'm creating is bonus underscore rates, right? I'm starting with the bonus rate to be 1%, right? And then I'm going to iterate six additional times and add another 1% to that bonus rate, okay? Notice I said six additional times because this first bonus rate value of 1% is going to be your first iteration, all right? So I iterate in my first iteration is going to be where I start at. And then I'm going to keep adding 1% to that six times. So we get our final output here where you see that we've iterated seven times and the final bonus rate that we got was 7%, okay? Keep in mind that I is seven because this first initial value counts as one. And one plus six where you're starting at equals seven, okay? So this is just a simple output. It's going to output one observation that's gonna have your last bonus rate and it's gonna have your last I, okay? So very simple do loop where I'm iterating through a variable such as bonus rate each time I'm adding another 1% to that bonus rate and then I'm just gonna output what the final result is. Now, what if I want to output all of the iterations, okay? And that's what our next slide is going to talk to us about, is outputting all of the iterations. And so we see in our next slide that now I have this keyword output statement here, right? So this output statement right here is going to output each one of my iterations. Okay, so on my first iteration, I'm going to get 2%, the next one, 3%, 4%, and so forth and so forth. Now, what you have noticed that I have this buy. So this buy is how I'm going to increment, okay? So I'm going to start at 1% and I'm going to end at 20% and I'm going to iterate 1% every time, okay? So my first iteration, my bonus rate is going to be 2%, then 3%, 4%, etc., all the way up until I hit 0 0.21, right? So it's going to shoot one past that. So if I want to output each of my iterations, I need to put this keyword output statement right before my end statement. And this is how we're able to increment in our do statement by a certain value. You just say, I wanna start here, I wanna stop here by this certain value, okay? So let's look at another example, what a do and tell. So that was just a standard do loop. So notice we just have do, a variable is equal to this, do a variable is equal to that. So now we have do and tell because we want to do up until some point, right? So it sounds exactly like it says. So in this case, I have my initial mortgage value to be 100K, so $100,000, and I'm starting off with zero payments. So say, for instance, I want to figure out how many payments it's going to take to, to pay my mortgage in full. 
So I'm going to do until my mortgage is zero. I'm going to subtract 1000 from my mortgage because I'm going to pay $1,000 on every payment. And then I'm going to add one to my payments. Notice there's no output statement before the end. So it's just going to print me out one observation. So when my mortgage is zero, I would have made a hundred payments. And that makes sense because a hundred times a thousand is a hundred thousand. So this is a simple do and tell loop where it's going to keep going until a certain point and you can keep track with a counter. In this case, my counter is called payments because I'm keeping track of how many payments it would take to pay my mortgage in full. So let's go ahead and look at yet another example with do and tell. So what if I want to print out each payment, right? So like a good receipt for every month. Notice once again, that in order to print out each payment and not just a final value, you need this output statement before the end, okay? And so now I see on my first payment, my mortgage is 99,000, then 98,000, then 97,000, so forth, so forth, and so forth. So that is just a simple do loop in a do and tell loop. And then I can combine the two so I can have nested loops, okay? So let's see an example of that. And so we see here that my first loop is going to be just my regular do loop. So I'm creating a data set called bonus rates where my bonus rate is gonna be 1%, up until 10% and I'm going to increment by 1% each increment. The minimum salary, say for instance, I want to get the bonus rates for my $40,000 salaried employees. And then I'm going to do until the bonus rate is less than or equal to 10%. And then I'm going to create this new variable here, which is the salary plus the bonus where it's going to be the bonus rate times that minimum salary plus the minimum salary. So that should return my total salary with the bonus included. I'm going to keep track of my count. So I'm going to add one to my count. This end here is going to be the end for my do and tell loop. And this output is going to come after I have done both of these do loops, okay? So after my last end is when I want to output that observation to my data set. And then I'm gonna do another end, which is going to be my outer do loop, okay? So this is what we call nested do loops. And I highly recommend that you practice these where we can put the regular do iterative loop that we just saw as our first example with a do and tell or a do while, right? And then we can output both of those loops. So let's see how this actually looks in SAS. I have it written out in SAS Studio. That is example four. So once again, I have do this. Bonus rate is 1% up to 20%. I change it to 20. Increment by 1%. My minimum salaried employees is $40,000. And then I'm going to initialize my I. In this case, I is counts. So I'm going to keep track of every time my loop run, runs. I want to do this until my bonus rate, let's say less than or equal to 20%. I want to create a new column that's going to be my salary plus the bonus. And then I want to add one to my count. Okay. And I want to output both of these do loops. So let's go ahead and run this. And sometimes do loops can take a long time to execute, okay? So keep that in mind when you're doing do loops that your output may take a moment to generate. So in our previous example, if my mortgage was not 100,000 and it was a million and I only did 1,000 payments, it's gonna take SAS quite some time to process that, right? Depends on your internet connection since we're working on SAS on demand and the um, breadth of your loop that you're trying to run. And this one seems like it's taking a long time. So just for demonstration purposes, I'm gonna put this back to one 
I'm going to put this back to one and let's go ahead and see the output. Here we go. It ran quite fast this time because I already ran this before, okay? So I see all of my bonus rates incrementing, okay? And then I see my new salary for, for a $40,000 employee that has each rate, right? So a $40,000 employee that's getting a 9% bonus, I am going to give them 43,600, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So this gives us a nice list of our employees and their corresponding bonus. I can increment by 0 0.05, right? Um, I can increment however I want to increment in my do loop, okay? So this is what our nested do loop does. Keep in mind, this was our bonus rate that we started off with, where we instantiated or initialized our variable to start at 1%. We wanted to perform our iteration six times, where we're adding 1% to our bonus rate and just output one value. So when we ran this, we got one observation of a bonus rate of 7%. If we wanted to output each of the bonus rate as a separate observation, we called output before the end. And then that output a list of bonus rates for us as well, okay? So all in all, this is a summary of the do and do and tell loops. They're just like for loops, um, if you can think of it that way. And this is very beneficial if you want to create a list of salaries, payments, mortgages, bonus rates, et cetera, interest rates, and you can just easily type this straight into SAS, you don't need an existing data set to get that information. So this is very great if you're working in finance, accounting, things of that nature, and you want to create a report. So thank you all for turning in with Learning with Jelly. Please like, comment, and subscribe, and stay tuned for Lesson 16.